National expressions. The number one rule about solving rational expressions is if there's an equal sign in a question, your final answer should be x equals something. If there's not an equal sign in your question, then you should not finish with x equals something. Okay? That's legitimately the difference between today and everything else we've done before now. Everything else before now, there's never been an equal sign. All you've ever been doing is simplify. Now, you're going to solve. Solve means there's an equal sign in the question. Before we actually solve rational expressions, we're going to remind ourselves just how to solve equations. Basically. If you look at this first question, you see 2x plus 2 equals 3x minus 4. To solve that means I should finish with x equals something. Right? That's how I should finish this question. To be able to do that means I need x to be on one side by itself, and I need everything else to be on the other side. So I need all my x's on one side of the equal sign, all my numbers or my constants on the other side. To do that, I'm going to look at this. I'm going to see that I have two x's and I'm going to have three x's. I always move my x's to the side that has more. So if this side has three x's, I move my x's that way. Meaning I need my 2x to be on the other side of the equal sign. To do things like that, to move things around, means you're doing reverse bed maps, right? If this is a positive 2x, I need to subtract 2x from both sides. So then those would cancel themselves out. I would say I have 2 equals 3x minus 2x is 1. So that's 2 equals x minus 4. Now that I have all my x's on one side of the equal sign, I need to move all my constants to the other side of the equal sign. So this plus 4 that's on the wrong side, we need to move it by plusing 4 to both sides. That would cause them to cancel out. We'd be left with 6 equals x which is exactly what we said we were going to end up with. We're going to end up with x equals some number. That's what we just did. I refer to it as getting x's to one side by themselves. I also refer to it as reverse bed maps, so working backwards to get something away by itself. Okay, like this. Same situation where I have an equal sign, if I have an equal sign, I must end up somehow with x equals some number. That's my goal. That means I need all the x's on one side of the equation. I already did that. All the x's are on the left side. There are no x's on the right side of the equal sign. Second step is to get all your numbers on the other side of the equation. So, if you're looking at the same, this 3 and this 4 need to move away and to go to the other side of the equal sign. So that's your job, to somehow move those to the other side. I always say reverse bed mass. You guys should have learned bed mass a long time ago. When I say reverse bed mass, I mean start with subtraction and get rid of any subtractions first. Move those things first. Then I move on to additions. Move any additions over first. Plus 3 would be the first thing I move. So I would subtract 3 from both sides. That would be x over 4 equals 4. Then I'm going to move any multiplication numbers to the other side. There are none. Then I'm going to move any division numbers to the other side. X divided by 4, I need to move that to the other side. The opposite of dividing is multiply. So you multiply both sides by 4. That will cancel those out and give you X equals 6. Last one. 
I have two fractions equal in number. There's an equal sign. That means my answer should end up as n equals something. In this case, it's an m instead of an x. Same thing. Something else I'm going to notice is that these have two denominators. And to be able to combine things that have two denominators, I need to find a lowest common multiple between these two things. We call it a common denominator. So what's my common denominator going to be between 3 and 4? It's going to be 12, right? I'm going to have to multiply this one by 4 and this one by 3. That's going to give me 4m over 12 plus 9m over 12 equals 3. Now that I have common denominators, this is a good review of yeah, two days ago, I can add the tops together and the bottom just become 1. So 4m plus 9m is 13m divided by 12 equals 13. So you'll see I've combined my m's all together on one side of the equal sign, which was my goal. At that point, I need to do bed mass, a reverse of it, to get the m by itself. Yeah. But you have to also add the times 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 3. Yeah, that's not great that after. You'll see. It'll get harder, It'll be like a little bit harder when we get to expressions, and we will have to do that. So I'm going to get rid of multiplication. So I'm going to divide both sides by 13. And then I'm also going to get rid of the 12 by multiplying all these things by 12. Those cancel. You put the other thing in your calculator, you get m equals. All I did was I put that right side of my calculator. You could have done multiplication. Yep, yep, you could have multiplied by 12 and divided by 15. Same order. Same thing. Why are you doing subsequent to 12 times? Because it's just a fraction, like multiplication and division can actually happen at the same time. And that's what I kind of was asking is, could I just multiply the 12 up here and then divide by 13 after? And you could. The order doesn't matter. So you could do it in either order you want. Or you could just divide it by 12 over 13 if you get it. Okay, that's solving just regular old things. Just regular equations. Now what we're going to do is we're going to solve rational expressions. We're going to follow the same three steps we followed all the way through. Up until now, what are those three steps? Factor, NPV, simplify. You've got to follow those three steps. So if you look at this first question and I say factor it, you can't factor it. But you still check and make sure, right? Second step is write out your NPVs. In this case, x cannot equal zero. It's my only NPV. My third step is now simplify. And I'm going to show you the best way, in my opinion, to simplify these things. And it's the same way as addition and subtraction. And to be able to add and subtract things, you need to have a common denominator. So that's what we're going to do, is we're going to try to find a common denominator here, but we're going to find it for all three denominators. Okay? You need to find a common denominator for three things now. That means when I look at the numbers, I'm considering all three numbers that have to be there. I have a 2, a 4, and a 4. So the lowest common number between all those would be... 4. And the way I can get to 4 is if I multiply this first one by 2. I don't have to multiply the other two by anything because they're already 4. 
the next thing I have in my denominators is I have an x in this one and an x in this one, but I don't have an x in that one. So I need to give this middle fraction an x. I do that by using by If I was to rewrite that, I would have 10 over 4x plus 3x plus 4x equals 9 divided by 4x. Any questions up till then? That's me getting a common denominator across three things. All right, the reason why I think this is the best way to do these questions is that if you have a common denominator and an equal sign, you have to have both things, then all your denominators cancel each other out. So if you have a common denominator and an equal sign, you have to have an equal sign. They all cancel each other out. I highly suggest you write a note to yourself so that you don't look back at your notes and just think, oh, I can cancel out denominators. You can only cancel them out if they're common and there's an equal sign. I'm going to say that one more time to the people in the back. <laughs> you need to have a common denominator and an equal sign. Please, when you're doing addition and subtraction of these things, don't just cancel out your denominators because you think you can only works when you're trying to solve. All right. <coughs> because we've done that, now all we have is 10 plus 3x equals 9. And that's an equation that you've been solving for four years. So you just need to get the x's by themselves. So you're going to subtract 10 from both sides to get 3x equals negative 1. Then you're going to divide both sides by 3. x equals negative 1. Alright, when you're solving, there's a fourth step. The fourth step is now to verify your answer. The reason step 2 was write out your NPVs is because step three can end with you saying that it is an NPV. You check to make sure that these things aren't the same. So if x can't equal zero, you better double check and make sure you didn't write x equals zero, because that wouldn't make sense. So you come down here, you check to make sure this is not one of your NPVs, and you give it the old check mark to make sure it's good. So when you get an answer, check the answer. All right, let's do another one. This next one that we go to do, we know that we need to find a common denominator when we're trying to solve these things, so we can use our little trick. The problem is this first thing is not a fraction, so you need to turn it into a fraction by dividing it by one. So everything in reality has always been a fraction. We just don't write divide by one, so that doesn't make sense. But for this case. I'm going to put divide by 1 to make sure it is a fraction, so then I'm going to find a common denominator for every. If I look at these, this first fraction has no x's, the second fraction has 1x, and the last one has x squared. So if I want to find a common denominator between all these, I need to multiply this guy by x squared, the middle one by x, and the last one by nothing. Because that would make all my denominators x squared. So I multiply the first one by x squared, top and bottom. I multiply the second one by just an x, and I didn't multiply the third one by anything. The reason we did that was so that we can take advantage of our little trick. And our trick here is cancel out everything on the bottom. So there's an equal sign, and there is 
a common denominator, you get rid of the denominators. That leads to it 3x squared plus x equals. Run into a little bit of a thick So, yeah. Explain what's happening. Thank you. This is going to be a good review for us. So, we now go to solve this thing. Try to get x by itself. You're going to notice that this thing is a quadratic. Okay, so it's x squared. Which means you can't just get x by itself. Instead, you have to remember what you did in math 20 with quadratics. And what you did was you put them in general form. General form looks like this. And you've been working in general form since grade 10. So you just need to reorder this to look like that. Do that, you have minus 4 both sides. Here you go, 3x squared plus x minus 4 equals. The next thing that you do to solve these things and figure out what x equals is you factor it. So you're going to factor this thing right here. When you factor it, you're going to look for things that multiply to be negative 12 and add to 1. 4 and negative 3. So 3x plus 4, 3x minus 3 equals 0. You then divide one of these by 3. And you should get 3x plus 4, x minus 1 equals 0. So, you took your quadratic, which was an x squared thing, you wrote it in general form, so it's equal to zero, then you just factored it. At this stage, when you have binomials, all you have to do is what we've been doing all along, is ask yourself what makes each binomial equal zero. So what makes that binomial equal zero? Negative four over three. What makes the second binomial equal to zero? Positive one. Those are your two answers. So x equals negative four over three and one. The NPV sorry, we're at the very beginning. Should have been x not equal to zero. Sorry, let's do that step. If you have a quadratic, factor it, figure out what makes the brackets equal zero. Hopefully you don't run into too many quadratics. Fingers crossed. I don't think you do. Alright. I want you to try. So there's two questions here. Give them both a shot. I'll show my work. Remember to write out NPVs, get a common denominator. First one, I have to get a common denominator. So I look at all the constants first, like the numbers. I have 5, 2, and 10. The lowest number of that to me is 10. Multiply the first one by 5, second one by 2. Then I look at my letters. I need an x in all of those. The only one that doesn't have an x is the middle one. So I have to multiply that by 2x, not just 2. Once you get your common denominator, you can cross it out because there's an equal sign. Then you were left with just a standard equation, which is a regular x. You had to get the x by itself. I subtracted 5 from both sides. And then I divided by negative 4. Uh, from experience, a lot of people tend to forget that that minus sign gives that 4. So it's 
strata still be with it even after the 5 goes to the other side. So make sure you divide by negative 4 on both sides. I then check to make sure my NPV is not the same as my answer, which is not. Alright, next one. We had to get a common denominator. There was only x's on the bottom, all the numbers are fine. So the first one had to get to x squared, so I multiplied by x. The third one had to get by x squared, so I multiplied by x squared to get to x squared. I then crossed out all my bottoms, and I got this thing. 5x plus 6 equals 6x. That's a quadratic. I can tell because there's an x squared term. So I had to write it in general form. Now, I moved everything to the right, and there's a reason I did that. So the reason I moved everything to the right is because you have to have a positive a value. So when you're in general form, you have something like this. Your a value has to be a positive number. If you moved it the other way, if you moved that negative 6 over to the other side, then you would have had a negative a value, and that's no good. You can't factor when you have a negative a value. You can't factor. You just can't factor accurately if you have a negative a value. So that'll really throw off your factor. At that point, you just have to factor this quadratic and figure out what makes each thing in the brackets equal zero. Again, this is showing how important factoring is in this video. Because that's a hard factoring problem. That's a hard problem if you ignore all the factoring. Then you throw in the factoring, it's a really hard problem. Alright, our last question. I think it's actually our last question. We'll see. Alright, we're going to follow our three steps. Factor, NPV, simplify. When I go to factor this thing, I can't factor it, but I am going to do something we learned on Monday. I'm going to put brackets around everything. Because I know that my goal is going to be to get x by itself after I have a common denominator. To get a common denominator, I need packages of things. That's why I'm putting brackets around. It also helps me with step two, which is my XPVs. So X cannot equal negative four or two. The things that would cause me to divide by zero. Third step is now to simplify. So to simplify this thing, you need to get a common denominator. You're looking for entire packages that you're missing. This thing has an x plus 4 in it, that means the other one needs to have an x plus 4 in it. What you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. The second one has an x minus 2, so the first one has to have an x minus 2. If you combine those together, you now multiply the 5 in, 3 in, <coughs> and you get 5x minus 10 divided by x minus 2, x plus 4, equals 3x plus 12 divided by x minus 2, x plus 4. So I found a common denominator. I multiplied my numerators together. Now I do my trick. Common denominator and an equal sign means get rid of the denominator. Now all you have left is 5x minus 10 equals 3x plus 12. That's a basic linear question you have to solve. You have to get all the x's by themselves. So we have minus 3x from both sides. So 2x minus 10 equals 12. I'm going to add 10 to both sides. 2x 
equals 22, divide both sides by 2. X equals 21. Much like how I go through my factoring fast now, I'm starting to go through my solving fast. So if you can't do it as fast as me, that's okay. That's normal. You should be able to do it as fast as me. But if you have no idea what I was doing to get it there, that's when you have a problem. So if you're having a hard time solving, you get the common denominator and then you can't solve those things, we need to go back and do a little bit of review together. So if that's your trouble, you need to let me know. All right, next question. Follow your same three steps. Factor, NPV, we solve. This thing, we factor. X squared minus 1 is the difference of squares. So that means I can change this to be X minus 1 X plus 1. Pause for a second. Instead of saying that this is equal to negative x, let's change this question to negative 2. So make your life a little bit easier. It's going to make your life way easier. If you already solved it, that's fine. Oh, yeah, there should be one where it doesn't match up. That's good. I don't want you to have to do all the work to solve it. If you get a quadratic, right? Yeah, I don't want to do a quadratic right now. So we'll change it to negative 2. If you solve it the other way, that's fine. I can do. We can tell you the answer after. Yeah, you're not allowed to negative one. Yeah, yeah, and that's fine. I just don't want you to solve another quadratic. I want you to focus on solving common denominators. Get x by itself. So, to solve this thing, I need a common denominator. I'm looking at total packages here. I have an x plus 1 and an x plus 1 in both denominators, so that's good. The first one has an x minus 1, the second one does not. So, I need to give it one. Now, I have 3x plus 1. Divide by x minus 1, x plus 1. I multiply that negative 2 in, so I have negative 2x plus 2 divided by x plus 1, x minus 1. Like that. So I multiplied the numerator, the bottom I just leave in factored form. If you look, you should have a common denominator and an equal sum. So you can get rid of all the denominator, and you're left with 3x plus 1 equals negative 2x plus 5. You want to get all your x's to one side, so I'm going to add 2x to both sides. So I have 5x plus 1 equals 2, and a minus 1 from both sides. I get 5x equals 1. And I divide both sides by 5. So x equals 1 over 1. Factor, NPV, common denominator, cross them out, solve it. You should also check to make sure it's not one of your NPVs. It's not my NPV, so I question would have been 1 and negative 1. So then after we factored, we would have done that. All right. You have two more questions here. Um, I want to change one of them, again, to make your life easier. If you did it, I'll show you the answer. So if you did it right, I'll show you the answer that too. But I just want to erase this x. So that'll make that one a little bit easier for you. If you didn't do that, your answer would have been negative 9 over 2 and 1. 
So if you did it the way it originally was, that would be your answer. If you want to challenge yourself, maybe do it without erasing that X. The second one will be a challenging one either way. I'm going to leave it that way. It is a challenging one. Try to solve it. Actually, I don't think it'll be a challenging one either. I think it'll work out. They both did turn out to be decent ones for solving. But they were both hard. So, the first step is always factor. On the one on the left, you don't have to factor, but you do have to add brackets to things. So remember to package things up even during your factoring stage. It really makes life a lot easier. Then you figure out which packages are missing in which denominators. That's how you get your common denominator. Once you get your common denominator, you multiply whatever's in the top, and on the bottom you cancel it all. Should have left you with 9 equals 5x plus 4. You just have to subtract 4 from both sides, divide everything by 5, and your answer should have just been a 1. Alright, next one. A little bit trickier. Again, you factor first. I didn't have to factor, but I did package everything up. Like, look at all the extra sets of brackets I added. Put one here, here, here. That makes life way easier when I know things are packages. People tend to forget that sometimes, and they think to themselves that they have to just get the 5 and the 1 to be the same number or something. But you need the entire package to change. So brackets are huge. You then get your common denominator by adding an x minus 1 to the first one, x minus 5 to the other one. The denominators will cancel out. On the top, you do have to do some multiplication. So I highly recommend that you FOIL or area diagram that numerator. This one right here. To get that, you had to area diagram or FOIL the numerator on that side. Then you end up with a quadratic. Yeah, but yeah. You get a quadratic to get nothing by itself. You need to be in general form. You move everything over. The x squares actually cancel out, which is why this question turns into a nice question. So when I move my things over, my x squares cancel out. x squared minus x squared is 0. So then you have 6x minus 2 equals 0. You move the 2 over. You divide by 6. You should have 2 over 6 as your answer. I also wrote it as 1 over 3 because that would be the simplified fraction of 2 over 6. Okay, if you are feeling confident, we are going to do a couple harder ones. So we're going to do the challenger problem on the left. You are going to do the challenger problem on the right. And we're going to see how we do. So, first step's always the same. Factor. Need to factor these things. This is going to become x divided by x minus 3, notice that I put it in brackets, equals negative 6, divided by, you diamond method that thing, things that multiply to be 15 and add to be negative 8, x minus 5, x minus 3. Now that it's factored, you have to write out your NPVs. x here, 5, 4, 3. Next thing is, you need a common denominator. You check your packages. They both have an x minus 3. That's good. The second one has an x minus 5, which the first one needs. Doing that gives you a common denominator. The bottoms cross on the top, you're going to have to multiply those numerators together. So the x comes into the brackets to make it x squared minus 5x equals negative 6. That thing's a quadratic because it's got an x squared term. The way to solve quadratics is to get all the constants on one side. So x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 0. 
solve it, you factor it. So k factors to be x minus 3, x minus 2. That means x equals 3 and 2. If you check, x equals 3 is also one of your NPVs. So if your solution is an NPV, you can't use it. You can call it extraneous. So the term for a solution that doesn't work is called extraneous. Just this three. So the, the answer of three is extraneous. Extra, so E X T R A, and then Neos. This N E O U S. Extraneous. <laughs> Extra or Neos. All right. Give the next one a shot on your own if you want. It's a hard one. And then try the multiple choice question after that, on the next slide. But give it a shot all the way through. Try your best. Follow the steps. See if you can't at least get a common denominator and the NPVs down. The first step to this problem is going to be factoring. Right? It's always the first step. Um, this one actually can be factored. While I factor it, I also add brackets around everything. Right? So any binomial that's there, I put brackets around. When I factored it, I shoot out x minus 4x plus 1, which works out quite convenient because my other things were x plus 4 and x minus 4. Before I start simplifying and stuff, and I'm bad for it, if you need to do your NPVs. So at the very top of my page, away from everything, I always write out my NPVs so that they're nice and clean and organized. Then I get a common denominator. I get that common denominator by adding the packages that were missing to the first two. Next thing that's important is I expand on my binomials in my top. I get this x plus 1 times x plus 1 becomes x squared plus 2x plus 1. However, this question is a subtraction question. So it's minus that thing I just created. So that negative sign has to come into the brackets like I showed in the blue to change all of these symbols to become negatives. Then you can collect your like terms. Then you can solve it all by moving to one side or the other. You should have got x equals negative 1. That is one of your NPVs. So that's an extraneous solution or an extraneous root. Both those things mean the same thing. Extraneous root, extraneous solution, same thing. Okay, multiple choice question. What is the solution of the equation? So, two ways to do this. Way number one is to solve the thing. So, if I want to solve this, I need a common denominator. I'm just going to do this quick. I'm going to do x plus 6, x plus 3. We do the bottom, we do the top. You also write out your extraneous or your non personal values, which is negative 6 and negative 3. I multiply my tops, and my bottoms cancel out. I push everything to one side. Factor. I solve. Compare that to my. Oh, did I just stay in somewhere? Oh, wait, never mind. Uh, oh, it shouldn't be negative three. Sorry, I'm going to touch my own business. I'm going to touch my own business. Because it should be 24. So it should be plus 24. Sorry. It's minus 24 equals zero. Which means if you do that, then it's going to be.
So my non first values are negatives at negative three. Oh, you're right. That'd be awesome. But if it was, you could have, yeah. So if you saw that thing fast like I did, you can tell your answer to be. However, there's another way you could have done this question, which is why I'm doing this super fast. Fill in the Just fill it in. So you would make a very good point. If you could just take your answers, and put those numbers in for the letters. So if you put the number 6 in for x, you would have 6 divided by 9 equals 8 divided by 12. Put both of those in your calculator, and you get that those are the same thing. Right? So you can literally just test your solution. <laughs> Which, which is a very valid way of doing that question. Hey, last year, we spoke to some people who could give us a uh, chance that was multiple choice that was specifically like this kind of stuff, but uh, you created, uh, created a lot of stuff. Yep. All I did was fill in a blank for the entire test. I got like a 9 -year -old. Yeah, and so they are, they're getting smart, so they know how to make it so that you don't get the answers given to you. But if that ever happens, do it. Like, legitimately, that's a test strategy. If you understand that these are solutions, means they must work in our face, then try it. Take the number, plug it in, see if it works. Yeah, that's exactly what they need.